Hey, you guys. Well, would you look at that? Ah, it's you. Welcome to Kids Church. Welcome to Kids Church Online. We're so glad you're here. So glad. Like really, really, really glad. I've got a question for you guys. Are you ready? Wait, ready for what? Ready to laugh? <laughs> ready to worship? <clears throat> me, 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 me. Ready to learn. About God and how much he loves you. Trust me, it's a lot. Ready for games? Hey, game time. Hey, game time. Ready for a joke? <laughs> you gotta wait to the end for that. Okay, it's time for Kids Church. Time for Kids Church. Kids Church! Here we go. Boy Shark! Welcome to the, the cooking show. show! Today we want to make some different kind of sweets and some, and some dinners. So let's get started. First we're going to make cookies. I want to make spaghetti and meatballs. Fine, we can make spaghetti. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing that we have to do is talk at the no. TV. No, you have to get some um, lines, and so you dump them in. Now you need to add some chocolate milk. Good. Suckers could make it good. Suckers. And we could get them off the stick okay. and, and cut get them, them off on the stick. No, sprinkle them in. Now we need to make the meatballs. First you raw, do the raw meat. Okay, raw meat. Raw, raw, raw. Okay, we're done? No, nope. If you want them to be really chewy, smush them down, and then you add some all of the bubble gum. Can we add a little bit marshmallow cereal? Yes, we can. It's looking good. Yep. I'll put it on the stove. How long? Um, 21, 22, 23. Okay, now we can... <coughs> now it's time for my turn. Let's try it. Yeah. Mmm, mm. these are good. It's pretty good. Wow. Join, Join us. us next time for another church cooking show. Bye. Goodbye. Let's just have a round of applause, man. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Get that out of here! Wait, let's go! Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Game Time with MJ. Hope y'all are doing well. To everybody, you know, and 345, guys, it's, it's time to have some fun. I thought today we'll be playing 
some awesome games in Roblox. Yes. So we're gonna hop right on in. Let's we'll see what happens. All right, here we go. <sighs> Everyone else, this is where the signal came from. Okay. I guess we're going in then. Okay. Is anyone else getting a bad feeling about this? Ha! <laughs> I am. Again, y'all don't laugh at me. I don't know what I'm doing. That's good, that's good. Piggy has woken up. Here we go! Uh -oh. Piggy, Piggy. Look, can I, Piggy, I don't know where you are, but I just want to let you know I'm really new to, to, to this whole thing. <laughs> okay. Piggy, Piggy, let's talk about this. Can you show me where you are first, Piggy? All right, hold on, I'm going back under this. All right, Rex, let's do it. Redeem. Money bags, money bags, money bags. All right, we got some money. How about we buy buy an egg? What we got? What we got? A Dalmatian? Hey. Piggy! Everyone say what's up to Piggy. Let's say what's up to Piggy. Oink, oink, say what's up oink. to Piggy. And Piggy's name is Bear? Rename. We're going to call you uh, Peppa, Peppa Pig. We got Peppa Pig. Oh, that was a bad jump. That was a bad jump. We're, we're gonna get better at that. Is that Piggy? Who's that? Who's that behind me? <gasps> Hello. Wait, 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 wait. Let's talk about this first. Let's talk about this first. I can give you some pizza. Oh, oh, that might have been a bad move. Oh, hold on. Juke moves. Juke moves. He doesn't see me. Does he see me? Yo, I can definitely get you some candy too. Is this a dead end? Oh, okay. We're good. We're good. We're doing a great job, guys. I think. We just have to survive for seven more minutes, yeah? Come, 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 come. Ooh, is this a key? Boom. All right, let's start unlocking some doors in Jesus' name. Piggy's gone for 20 seconds. Perfect timing. Hey, look at the homies. Look at the crew. We out here, man. See? We have a lamb. A golden bear. Ooh. So let's say what we got. We got we got the homie Rex. We got another another pet called Bear. We have Lamb Charlie. We have Buddy the Black Bear. Milo the chicken. I have two Dalmatians. I have Tucker and Winston. Let's see what we got. A tur a turtle. A turtle. A turtle film? A turtle. And his name is Finn. Yes. Okay. Pooh Bear is out. Finn the turtle is in. I like Finn too. That That's a nice name. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. I have a key. I want to use it. Wait. Don't see me. I'm not here. I'm invisible. Why am I talking like Batman? I have a key. I want to use it. Ooh. Oh! Oh! No! 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 Breathe, MJ. Breathe. Wow. That just happened right before my eyes. Oh, good juke moves! Good juke moves, bro! Y'all, I got juke moves. Oh! My- <laughs> Amazing, 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 guys. Well, I hope you all enjoyed today's episode of Game Time with MJ. Hope you all have an awesome rest of the day and that you all enjoy the rest of Kids Church, all right? Peace. Hey, what's up guys? One of my favorite things that we get to do here at Kids Church is worship. 
Yeah, that's right. And there are so many ways to worship God. And I love that we get to sing and dance, just some amazing songs to honor God. But worship isn't just about singing and dancing. It's about honoring God with everything that we do. Now, worship is the way that we get to respond to God by telling and showing Him how much we love Him. So right now, we're going to worship God by giving Him our offering. By giving God our offering, we're telling Him that we love Him and acknowledge that everything we have comes from Him. So while we start singing, go ahead, grab your offering, put it in your worship jar. And I am so proud of each of you for worshiping God in this way. All right, you guys ready? Let's stand on up and get ready to worship.
Hey, what's up, KC family? I'm so glad you all are joining us online. I just wanted to say that if you are in LA, I will personally love to see you in person here at Christian Assembly. Just wanted to let you all know, we love you and we miss you. As always, I have to ask you guys a question. Do you guys know any riddles? Yeah? Well, can I ask you all a riddle real quick? I can? All right, all right, here we go. I clean the air. Sometimes I give you food. I can be beautiful, and you'd miss me if I disappeared. What am I? What do you all say? What do you all say? Give you guys a couple more seconds. Think about it. All right, drum roll, please. The answer is a plant. Now raise your hand if you guessed that correctly. Yeah? Good job. Okay, now can you all tell me some specific benefits of plants? Like, why is it good and important that plants exist? Come on, yell it out. Let me hear you. Good, good. Wow, you guys are extremely smart. Yes, they put oxygen into the air. They give us a variety of foods, fruits, nuts, and vegetables. They provide homes for animals and birds. The wood from trees provide, you know, paper, pencils, and lumber to build our homes and furniture. And we enjoy them for, the, for their beauty and uniqueness. Guys, can we all just say amen for God's creation? Amen. Guys, in today's story, God used a plant to teach Jonah an important lesson about God's love and compassion. If you were here last weekend, then you know we have been following Jonah and his journey to Nineveh. Now, did God want Jonah to go to Nineveh? Yes, right? Good, good. But did Jonah want to go to Nineveh? No, right? He really didn't want to go. Now, why didn't Jonah want to go to Nineveh? Yeah. Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh because Jonah didn't want God to forgive and save them. Great job, guys. Now you all have an amazing memory. Now let's check back in with Jonah as we dive into our Bible story video today. Here we go. But God foils Jonah's plans to escape Nineveh. As Jonah's sinking, God provides this strange watery tomb for him, the stomach of a large fish. Now, of course, under normal circumstances, this would be certain death. But in this story, everything's upside down. And so Jonah's submarine death becomes his passage back to life. Cramped in the stomach of this beast, Jonah utters a prayer where he never technically says that he's sorry. But he does thank God for not abandoning him, and he promises that he will obey God from this point on, no matter what. And God's response is quite comic. The whale vomits Jonah back onto dry land. So once again, God commissions Jonah to go and preach in Nineveh, and Jonah complies. We're told that Nineveh was a gigantic city. It would take days to walk through. So Jonah gets one day in, and here is his message. Forty more days, and Nineveh will be overturned. It's five words in Hebrew. Now, his sermon is very short, and it's also odd. I mean, look at what's missing. There's no mention of what the Ninevites have done wrong or of what they should do to respond. There's no mention of who might overturn them. And most noticeable, there's no mention of God. 
What's going on here? Has Jonah intentionally given the bare minimum of information? It's like he's trying to sabotage his own message or ensure the Ninevites' destruction. There's just no effort on Jonah's part here. Whatever his motives are, the plan doesn't work. Because no sooner does he utter this five-word sermon that the king of Nineveh, the entire city, including all its cows, repent in sorrow and ashes. So for the second time, these evil pagans show themselves to be more responsive than God's own prophet. So God forgives the Ninevites and he doesn't bring destruction on the city. Now, here's the brilliant part of the story. The last word of Jonah's short sermon, overturned, means just that, turned over. And it can refer to a city being overthrown or destroyed like Sodom and Gomorrah, but it can also be used of something being transformed, like turned over and changed into its opposite. And so, comically, Jonah's words actually came true, but not in the way that he intended. Nineveh does get turned over as Jonah's enemies repent and find God's mercy. The final chapter brings all the pieces together. Jonah, he's fuming mad, and he utters his second prayer. He first tells God why he ran away back in chapter 1. It was not because he was afraid. Rather, it was because he knew that God was so merciful. And this is great. Jonah actually quotes God's own description of himself from the book of Exodus, and he throws it back in God's face as an insult. He says he knew that God is compassionate and that you would find some way to forgive these horrible Ninevites. You can just hear the disgust in Jonah's voice. He'd rather die than live with the God who forgives his enemies. Fortunate for Jonah, God doesn't comply and simply asks if Jonah's anger is even justified. Jonah ignores the question and he goes outside the city to camp on a nearby hill waiting to see what might happen. You know, the Ninevites might repent of their repentance and get roasted after all. What happens next is very odd. God provides this viney plant to shade Jonah from the sun, and that makes him quite happy. But then God sends a tiny worm to eat up the plant, and so Jonah loses his shade. And there, in the heat of the sun, Jonah asks again that God kill him. So God, again, asks Jonah if his anger is justified, and Jonah barks back, absolutely just let me die. And those are Jonah's last words in the story. God's final words are what concludes the book. He says that this whole vine incident was an attempt to get through to Jonah, right? Jonah got all concerned and emotional over this vine, which he only enjoyed for a day. And God asked Jonah, you know, aren't humans a bit more valuable than vines? I mean, isn't it okay if God might feel the same kind of emotion and concern for the city of Nineveh that's full of thousands of people who have lost their way and also their cows? And that's how the book ends, with God asking Jonah for permission to show mercy to his enemies. And what is Jonah's answer? The story doesn't say, because that's not the point. The point is that the book is trying to mess with you. And God's questions here are actually addressed to you, the reader. Are you okay with the fact that God loves your enemy? And so this book holds a mirror up to the one who reads it. In Jonah, we see the worst parts of our own character magnified, which should generate humility and gratitude that God would love his enemies and put up with the Jonah in all of us. And so this strange story actually becomes a message of good news about the wideness of God's mercy that ought to challenge us to the core. And that's the book of Jonah. And that is the end of Jonah's story. Now I want us to go over his entire story together now that we've seen and heard both parts. But in order to do this, I thought it would be cool to take a look at some items to help us remember key moments along the way. All right, take a look at this. First, we have a pair of, yes, shoes. Now, what do you think this represents in Jonah's story? Okay, good thoughts. Guys, the shoes represent Jonah running from God. Next, look at this. We have a toy boat. Yes, now what does this represent? Exactly, yes, the boat represents the boat that Jonah boarded to run from God, right? Okay, now we have a toy fish, yes. <laughs> Now, what does this represent in our story? Of course, of course, guys. Yes, the fish that swallowed Jonah. Next, we have a picture of a heart. What do you think this represents in Jonah's story? Yeah. Wow, you guys are smart. Yes, this represents when Jonah's heart changed and he then obeyed God. Now we have a picture of 
the Bible. Yes. What do you think this represents? You guys got right to it. Right. This represents Jonah when he preached the word of God to the people of Nineveh. All right. Now we have ooh a picture of a crown. What do you think this represents? Okay. Yeah, good job. The king of Nineveh and all of his people repented, right? Now we have two pictures left. What does this picture of a vine represent? Right, you, got, you guys just heard it, right, in our story. It represents the vine that covered Jonah. Now, lastly, we have a picture of sunblock. <laughs> guys, what do you think this represents? Yeah, yeah, you guys are great. Guys, this represents Jonah, right, complaining about being in the hot sun. Give yourself a round of applause. Good job. Now, guys, as a family and as a group, I want you all to go over these questions together. Here we go. Great job, everybody. I love how you all are engaging in today's story. Now, the story of Jonah ends without us, the readers, knowing if Jonah changed his attitude toward the people of Nineveh in the end, right? Now, I want you all to think and wonder if anything may have given Jonah compassion for the people of Nineveh. Guys, I, I wonder if there is someone in our lives that we need to forgive and show compassion to. Maybe this week, we all should make some time to ask God for courage and showing love and mercy towards that person this week. Guys, let's read our memory verse for this month together. Suppose I speak in the languages of human beings or of angels. If I don't have love, I am only a loud gong or a noisy symbol. Suppose I have the gift of prophecy. Suppose I can understand all the secret things of God and know everything about him. And suppose I have enough faith to move mountains. If I don't have love, I'm nothing at all. Suppose I give everything I have to poor people. And suppose I give myself over to a difficult, difficult life so I can brag. If I don't have love, I get nothing at all. 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 3. Guys, let's continue to try our best this week to forgive and speak with love, gentleness, and respect, okay? Let's close our time together by thanking God for showing great love and compassion towards us in the entire world by sending his precious son, Jesus, all right? Thank you all for being awesome listeners. Can we all pray? All right. God, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for everyone who's listening right now. God, and like I said earlier, Lord, I just pray that you just help us, Lord, continue to show love and compassion, Lord, towards others. Um, God, as we, as we spend some time, just even wonder and think for a little bit, Lord, if there's anyone in our lives that we need to show forgiveness and compassion to, Lord, that you would give us courage, Lord, to do that. Thank you so much, God, for your word and, 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 and Jonah, Lord, as, as we followed his journey, Lord. And, and God, I just pray that you just be with us this upcoming week, Lord, that we have fun, but we also are always aware of how you're working around us and in us, God. I pray all this in your precious name. Amen. I love you all so, so much. Hope you all have an awesome week. Until next time, all right? Peace. Hi, kids. I hope you're all doing well today. As much as I enjoy doing these jokes on film, I would love to tell them to you face to face here at CA. Anyway, here's a question for you. What can you catch but not throw? A cold. Take care, everyone. <laughs>